since the club started, the, the culture was always to like do things together, like to go out after matches and stuff. So that made it very easy to connect with the guys actually. Um, the guys who came like later on, like they took a bit of time to you know to get comfortable with the idea of what Cape Town City does, because there's so many weird stuff that we've done. Um, so they don't immediately like, take to it, but I think when they see the guys like Bove and Sidat, I mean, we've been here since the first season, and they see them like okay with what we do, then they also like adapt to it and they sort of becomes a norm. Like they expect us to do like weird stuff now, like, like we went 4x4 four four on the 4x4 course one time and it had nothing to do with anything, we just did it because we thought it might be fun and like the guys get an opportunity to, to pick on each other because some of them can't drive. Dove can only drive automatic so I uh, know Keanu definitely can't drive, that's for sure. <laughs> I think the fact that Cape Town City, everyone at Cape Town City is not afraid to be different, um, to try new things and push the boundaries on what a soccer club is supposed to do. Um, I think a lot of the other clubs have just done the same thing for so many years and some of them have been successful with it and most of them have not. But I think most of the clubs have different priorities and this is one thing I learned. I, even though I enjoyed my time at Pitts and I enjoyed being in Joburg and all that, that's where I actually learned where um, different clubs have different priorities. Um, for example, Pitts has no interest in growing a, a big, big fan base or big marketing media presence. Whereas Cape Town City kind of realized from the beginning that it's important to have an online presence, it's important to have, to create a perception uh, of the club, that it's a big club, you know, and people took to it. Um, and like John is a big um, influence behind that because he, he like, he drives things, like he's that energetic person, he never sits still and he, he one day told us, you guys come up with the small marketing things, why don't you just give away a car at half time? What are you talking about? We saw it as the weirdest idea, but he keeps coming with ideas like that and most times when we pursue it, it actually works. So, so like, it's important to have someone like him who's hands-on and a driving factor and so experienced in the... <laughs> John and I have a cool relationship, so I, I can I can tell him anything, and he won't take offense to it because he's comfortable enough as a person. Um, but he's a he's a difficult person to work for because he doesn't sleep. Like he'll be texting you at 12 at night, and he expects you to answer. So, <laughs> but he 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 thinks that most of his good ideas or good thoughts come at night um, over a glass of red wine. Sometimes when we are having marketing meetings it takes us somewhere that has nothing to do with the club and having wine and he says, when the wine's flowing the ideas are going to be flowing. So, <laughs> so he's, he's, he's also a straightforward guy, like he'll tell you exactly where you stand and you have to kind of have the balls to, um, to get through it and realize that he's not pushing you down, he's, that's just who he is and you have to accept him for who he is and um, he expects everyone else to be themselves and if, if I'm the type of person who's going to tell you straight then I tell him straight and he accepts it, he doesn't, he doesn't um, <coughs> like pull rank or nothing like that, if your opinion is valid he takes it. People don't understand how him and Benny gets along because <laughs> cause Benny's said a lot of things you know. <laughs> Um, but but John has since day one accepted Benny for who he is and he's known Benny for 20 years or so. You know? So they understand each other and Benny knows that he can say how he feels, if, whether it's to John or to the media. And John will not take offense to it and throw tantrums about it. John accepts it and then a week later they speak about it and then it's done. I heard the news that Eric was going to join Supersport United and 
the first thing ben, um, John said to me was, how do, what do you think of Benny? Like, obviously, he's the best player South Africa's ever had. I love him to bits. I grew up watching him. He's like, no, no, no. What do you think of Benny as a coach? As a coach? I've never seen... Then I did a bit of research. I was like, okay, he's done his coaching badges. He's coached a bit in Scotland, in Belgium. I was the most excited. I actually, I was so angry because it was our off season and John kept calling me every day about ah, Eric's leaving, we need to do. So I couldn't go anywhere, so I worked the whole off season to prepare everything for Benny to arrive. And I was angry that I didn't have time off, but when I heard it was Benny, like it just made it okay. And then since the first day he's arrived, like for his first meeting, before we even announced him as the coach, like he sat me down, he's like, I don't want you to change how you work. I will adapt to to the things that you normally do because like what you've done has been working. Um, but uh, exactly one year later he's changed everything <laughs> the way I do. <laughs> I feel like you know the answer to this, but you just want someone to say. So the, the the biggest, biggest one is probably that all footballers are players. And most of them are, to be honest, but it's it's that, let's say, 30% of the group is, and that 30% creates, is where the perception came for all of them, you know, like, because there's so many guys who are married, and who are in relationships, they have kids, they have families, and who live a good life, but... Because the, the ones who are the bad boys are always in the limelight and always in the newspapers and that. And that's what people on the outside see. They don't see the, the quiet ones, the, the more calm boys. So, so I, I can understand where the, where the perception comes from. And I think the, the second thing is that like footballers get put in a box very quickly and they, they are understood to not be very intelligent. But like, we've seen like a lot of our players do things outside of football and it takes a level of intelligence to, to be able to do that and to still keep your focus in football. So I don't know if we're just that lucky that we always get players who are crazy but can fit in and can do other things. So, or if that's how John signs players, I don't know. Been in football for 30 years, you know, uh, as a player and then as owner, and uh, it's, it's, it's a passion. You know, we, we have our businesses, uh, I've had our, our businesses over the years, and uh, um, you know, I'm blessed to have been financially very stable. So, you know, I can. And uh, to invest in the game, and uh, you know, if you run with business properly, it, it is profitable. Uh, you must remember. Every time the rest of the world puts us under pressure and our currency is under pressure, I'm smiling because I'm selling players into the dollar, into the euro. So for me, I'm in the right business. You know, and it's a case of balancing winning and, and business at the same time. Don't get ahead of yourself and sell the team and then, you know, scrape around the relegation zone. A lot of thought behind coming back into football in the rest of Cape. Um, Cape Town has had a few PSL clubs over the years. It's, it's you know, they've kind of dwindled and some have left the city, some have sold their franchise, a couple of them relegated. So the representation for Cape Town, any big city, any major city in, in the world has a club that, that kind of uh, flies the flag for the city. So. Um, you know, to be synonymous with the world standards, Cape Town is a big club, and a club that represents the city. So going forward, though, you can't, you have to change the landscape of football. Um, the fan has been left behind in football. You know, unlike rugby and cricket, everything is kind of uh, works around the fan and the fan experience and the, the facilities that are out there for the fan to be able to go out and have entertainment. Ultimately, that's what we sell. We sell entertainment. And um, the problem has been that we've never had proper stadium, proper facilities. We gypsies in our own backyard. You know, these are football stadiums that we have to pack our stuff at the end of the day and leave. You know, it, it can't be right. And a fan experience is not one and a half hours of football match. It's, it's, uh, it's a six hour event. 
but you have to provide the entertainment and strength the facility conducive to that. People have to feel comfortable as well be uh, hospitality, food, drink. So to, to change that, that is really where, where the significant changes will come if we are able to have control of our own stadium or otherwise have our own stadium itself. You know, my football uh, history is that Benny played for my team at Cape Town Spurs and at 18 he left and went to Ajax Amsterdam. So he's done a full cycle with, with us, so we know Benny as a, as a young boy. And for him to come back to South Africa as a coach qualified with a pro license is a full cycle. And uh, it was very risky, but there were so many positives about bringing Benny back and, and giving him a chance. And the way the infrastructure works at our club, it's very difficult to fail. You've got to really be stubborn and, 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 and do your own thing to fail because there's so many, so much advice coming in from different areas, from different aspects that, and we have quality players. You know, at the end of the day, the coach is also as good as his players. You know, the, the, the line between failure and success is very, very thin at the PSL. But, you know, you've got to keep going and I think he's got a fantastic character and he's humble and he's competitive and uh, he's got an opinion, he's stubborn when he wants to do something, which is great because you need that as well. But at the same time, he's open-minded and he's, he's able to understand the bigger picture because he's seen the bigger picture. I think what we did is we pushed the envelope all the time. We, we, we always tried new things. We, not scared to be brave and be kind of bold about what we want to do and uh, we've understood the psyche of the customer out there and they're very IT savvy, they, they love the social media stuff and if you want to relate to the new generation, you've got to be in tune with them, you've got to listen to their kind of music, you've got to put it out the way they want to see it and it's, there's got to be some pizzazz about the way you do it. But winning is, is essential and, and you can't, you've got to get that right. And to get that right it comes with many years of, of knowing how to balance a team, etc., etc., with the right people, the right stuff. And every player at Cape Town City must be a personality. Uh, it's not a bunch of players that you can't even name. If I ask you a couple of the other players, I'll you probably won't know to list five, four, five players' names. Whereas our guys have got a character of their own. And that's by design. And, and as you do that, you start having a personality, you start having a, a, a presence on the, on, the, on, the, on the field that people uh, uh, relate to, and people have their favorite players, etc. And slowly, slowly you get that emotional hook. Winning is the biggest catalyst. The second biggest is to do things you know, brave and, and, and colorful and with, with, uh, with good attitude. And you know, our values are, are correct. And the bigger scale of things is um, the link between the sponsors, the players and the management itself. So whenever anything that has to do with the sponsors I get involved and, uh, and also um, the bridge between the management and the players because I'm still fresh from retirement so I know how the players think so it becomes easy for the management to understand how the players are going, what the players are going, actually going through. When I came to Cape Town City it was the initial plan that I uh, I didn't see myself moving after the Cape City. And uh, to retire last season, it, it just happened probably maybe in the beginning of the season, that's how I felt. And I spoke to the management about it, and uh, we, we kept it under wraps because we didn't want to disturb the team as well. The retirement was something I actually thought about because I didn't want to retire when I couldn't walk anymore or maybe not enjoying football anymore. So for me, uh, I always said that once football becomes a job, then I need to quit because I play, uh, play the game because of the passion that I have. And uh, it started feeling like one, it started feeling like a job. Just because I'm still involved in football, I haven't missed playing at all. Because that's the question they always keep asking me. But I do, I miss football and I don't. Um, I don't miss being on the pitch. Maybe because uh, I hated how I felt after the games. You know, the pains that I feel after putting a shift in the game. So that was very painful. So I don't want to go through that again. I still have the passion, but now maybe it's a different passion now. I think the difficulties will be... 
Then coaches that I find it very difficult that does that it's maybe those who retire uh, too soon, you know, because of circumstances, and then now they decide to be a coach, and then you fail to to to, to really adjust to being a, to become a coach. Now you still beta off the things that you thought that you could have still achieved as a footballer. So now when you become a coach, you become this harsh, mean coach that uh, it's unnecessary just because you retired too soon and you are not actually prepared to become a coach. But I've seen guys that actually retired well. They retired because they wanted to and they became coaches and they're good coaches. But I think for me, it's if the day that I decide to be a coach, it won't be anytime soon. <laughs> it won't be anytime soon though, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's the easiest thing to do as a player because you know the game and become a coach. But just for me now, I'm still doing things that are very challenging because I still want to grow in certain things in my life. And once I've achieved those, I will probably maybe consider coaching.